This book is the definition of girl dinner, girl feast, if you will. Hello everyone, long time no see. I took a little YouTube break. I took a little break from the internet, disappeared for like a month. I had some things going on and I just needed some time away, but it's been a long time since I have updated you on what I'm reading and since I filmed a reading vlog and I really feel like reading right now and it's October. I'm really getting in the spirit of Halloween and I wanna read some not necessarily scary, but kind of gothic mystical books that I feel like fit in with the vibe of the month so I thought it'd be really nice to just film like a regular casual reading vlog for you all today well maybe over the next couple of days because I have a couple books I want to finish yeah I just thought that you know we do like a fun little reading vlog because it's been a while I just recently got out of the shower hence my wet hair and the whole look so it's like early in the morning like not even nine o'clock yet and I have a lot of housework and stuff to do so I have like a lot of cleaning and things to do so I plan to listen to some audiobooks today and then also get in some just sitting down reading time to relax and wind down as well. So I have a whole TBR, which I'm gonna show you. Okay, so these are the books that I plan to read. I don't think I'm gonna finish all of them because I don't think I'll have the time to finish all of them, but I'd like to finish like at least three of them, which I think would be nice. But first up is Modern Divination, which I have been reading for a couple months now. I just put it down for like two months and didn't touch it because I didn't read anything for a bit, but I wanna pick it up again. I'm almost finished, honestly. I have like maybe a little bit less than a third of it left. This will probably be the first one that I finish. This is like a dark academia witchy novel about these two rival academics who end up having to work together in order to save their own lives. I definitely think it needs some work on certain aspects of the story but overall I'm having a good time with it and the vibes are there. More than anything this book is kind of just about the vibes and that's kind of what I'm looking for right now so I'll definitely let you know final thoughts once I finish it but I'm excited to see what I think uh, by the end because I haven't seen many reviews of it but I just kept seeing this book like all over Instagram which is why I decided to pick it up but yeah hopefully I I like it a little bit more by the end but yeah I just want like all things witchy and all things Halloween themed so the next book uh, that I really want to read is one that I've been wanting to read for such a long time and one I still can't believe that I still never read and that is Frankenstein. Yeah, I've never read Frankenstein and I feel like I just, I need to. I already know that I'm probably gonna love this and I feel like October is the perfect month to read Frankenstein so I'm gonna make it happen. Um, I really love this edition as well. I bought this at like the Barnes & Noble sale last year. It's the Harper Muse edition. I don't know exactly what it is. The Pretty Book Collection. That's what it says on the inside. They were really on the nose with the name there. But they do a lot of these editions for um, classic novels. I just love the look of this one. I think it's so, so nice. Definitely want to get to this one as well. The next book that I wanna read is one that either just came out or will be out by the time you're watching this video. It'll be out really soon if it's not already out. Um, but this is Starling House by Alex E. Haro. I really don't know anything about this. Um, I've just seen the cover everywhere. I really like the look of the cover and based on the vibes of it and the fact that it's blurbed by both Olivia Blake and Kat Howard, I feel like it might be something I might enjoy. I just wanna try it out. Um, I know this is probably gonna be a pretty big release for the year, especially in the second half of the year for fall. So I'm curious to know what I'm gonna think of it and yeah I'm, I'm excited to get to it I just want gothic fantasy vibes I don't even know 100% that this is fantasy I think it is we'll find out so hopefully this one doesn't disappoint and I end up really enjoying it these are the three that I really want to get to within this vlog within this video and hopefully finish um, but the last book that's also on my list if my mood changes and if I just feel like picking up something different that's honestly also not that different from Starling House is Belladonna this is one I've been wanting to read for a while this is another like gothic romantic YA fantasy book and as you all know I really love books like that so I may end up picking up this one instead of Starling House at some point. We'll see where my mood takes me okay you know I'm a really moody reader so it all kind of depends but these are the books that I'm kind of trying to stick to so those are the books I plan to read. Right now I have like a lot of housework and housekeeping things I need to do because I have like a whole suitcase right here that I need to unpack from a trip uh, because I need to pack it again for another trip that I'm going on later next week. And I have a whole bed of clean laundry I need to put away. I have other laundry I need to do. It's just like a lot of things. Honestly, maybe I will pick up one of these on audiobook. I don't know if this is out, so I may actually have to do this. Or I'll listen to Frankenstein on audiobook. I have that audiobook, so I might start it that way. Maybe, maybe we'll start with Frankenstein instead of Modern Divination. You know, I know I just said that I'm probably gonna finish that first, but I need an audiobook right now so that I can work while I listen to something. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. We'll start with the audiobook of Frankenstein. No idea if the audiobook is any good, um, but it's nice that I also have the book so I can just flip back and forth. But yeah, let's just get started and I'll be back to update 
once I've gotten some work and reading done. All right, so I have done a good bit of my chores. I put some of my clothes away and stuff, and I've been listening to Frankenstein on audiobook while I've been doing that, and I'm really liking it so far. It's about one o'clock right now, and I am about halfway through the book, like a little bit more than halfway through. I'm on chapter 14 right now. I am realizing, reading this, how little I actually know about the story of Frankenstein. <laughs> All I've ever really known about this story is kind of like the cultural influence that it's had in the sense that like I have an image of what Frankenstein's monster looks like and that's like kind of it. I don't know the plot of Frankenstein and I'm really realizing that now starting reading it because I have no idea what's gonna happen. So yeah I really don't know where this is gonna go um, which is really nice actually. I feel like most classics for the most part I kind of know uh, you know the general storyline because they're so culturally relevant and people talk about them all the time so you kind of know the general story but I'm I don't know I don't know why I really didn't know anything about the actual plot of this book but I'm really liking it so it's a lot of fun uh, to discover what's gonna happen as I go along and I love the writing style and I like a lot of the commentary that the story has to make. The only thing I did know about Mary Shelley before reading this book was I knew who her mother was. Her mother was Mary Wollstonecraft who was an author and kind of a radical of her time. She was a feminist of her time because she wrote a book called On the Vindication of the Rights of Women and I only knew about that because of school. It actually took me a while to connect that she was Mary Shelley's mother so knowing that about who her parents were that being her mother and her father was also very much a progressive of his time. It makes sense that this book would be also kind of progressive for its time in uh, the attitudes that she has towards different groups of people and just like the themes that she chooses to write about in the story. So I'm not fully surprised by that but it's just really pleasant to read about. Curious to know where the story is gonna go. Again, I have no clue where it's gonna go. I don't know how the story ends. I don't know anything. I really don't know anything which is so fun. But yeah, I'm gonna get back to continuing with this. Um, hopefully I'll finish it in the next like hour or two um, and then I will move on to probably Modern Divination but also Starling House is kind of of calling out to me. I really want to read that one too. So yeah. Anyway, I'll be back once I finish Frankenstein to give you my final thoughts. I finished the book and I finished all my chores. <laughs> but yes, I finished Frankenstein. I loved this. I really like the whole dichotomy of who is man, who is monster. We don't really know the answer. There were multiple passages and quotes that I ended up marking down um, and some that I want to go back to because I know there are some that I missed because I was busy doing something and away from the physical book while I was listening to the audiobook so I need to go back and mark those down too. But it was beautifully written. There were so many passages in here that I just like paused while I was reading because they really really stuck with me. Yeah I just had a really great time with this. This is exactly the eerie Halloween tone and vibe that I was hoping to set for this reading vlog and for myself for the remainder of the month. So I'm very excited to have started off on such a good note. This is also the type of book where I really wish that I had read this for a class because it would have been really nice to be able to discuss this with other people in a classroom setting where you could, you know, just like dissect it line by line, chapter by chapter. Um, that's the type of thing that I feel like this book needs and deserves. But unfortunately I had to read things like The Fountainhead. So <laughs> um, I wish that I could go back and have to have read this in high school. That would have been way more fun. <laughs> but yeah, instantly now a new favorite classic for me. I think I would give this like four out of five stars. It's not like an all time favorite for me. It doesn't stick with me the way that The Picture of Dorian Gray did like the first time I read that. But it's definitely something I plan to revisit and something I feel like I just needed to read. I just wanted to have this context and know the text itself. So I'm really glad that I've read it. I'm really happy. Literally got me through all of my chores, which is all I can ask for. <laughs> On to the next book. So I think next up I'm gonna continue and hopefully finish tonight the remainder of Modern Divination, but it's been a bit so I need to dive back into it and finally finish up the ending. So we're gonna do that next. I'm literally just gonna curl up on my bed with my bookshelves, read, relax, and do nothing else. Think of nothing else except these worlds that I, oh, I don't really wish I could live in these worlds. It's kind of like, you know, not ideal, but I do want to escape mentally. So that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> also, I have my Halloween Oreos because literally, I don't know how to explain this. I don't like any Oreos that are not Halloween Oreos. Something about this orange dye, whatever it is that they put in this, makes it taste completely different to me. And I don't eat Oreos ever unless it's Halloween and they have the Halloween Oreos. So I had to get myself some the other day. But yeah, just needed to show off my Halloween Oreos to keep on theme with our slightly Halloween themed vlog. <laughs>
Hello, good morning. So it's the next day. I read a bit more of Modern Divination last night and I do plan to finish the book today. But this morning, um, I really felt like doing like a fall activity. So um, we're gonna go to a pumpkin patch that's nearby because I really just like, I feel like being in the Halloween spirit and fully immersing myself into the month of October because I don't even know if I'm gonna have Halloween this year. I don't even have a costume planned or anything. So I wanna spend the rest of the month doing as many Halloween October activities as I can. So we're gonna go to a pumpkin patch and I think it's gonna be really fun and really cute. What are we gonna do there? Just wander for like a little bit and maybe buy a pumpkin for the house, but that's pretty much it. <laughs> I just thought it'd be fun to bring you along with me. I thought I'd bring one of the books so I can take a cute picture while I'm there. And yeah, it's just gonna be a good fun October time. And then when I come back, probably gonna sit down a bit more, finish this up and then get started on, I think I'm gonna go with Starling House. So yeah, that's the plan for the day and let's head out. back from the pumpkin patch. Oh, I have to get my pumpkin to show you. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> It looks like a little bird. It's so cute. I didn't get any other pumpkins. I didn't really need anything, but this one just like spoke to me. It was so cute and it literally looks like a little bird. It even can sit. And uh, the lady who worked at the pumpkin patch too was like, that's adorable. I wanna just gift that to you because it's just so cute that you chose that one. And it was so sweet, but yes, this is my little pumpkin from my pumpkin patch adventure for the day. <laughs> but it was really fun. I haven't been to a pumpkin patch in a really long time. I used to go all the time when I was a kid and I haven't been in so, so long. So. I'm really glad that I got to go today. But now, time to sit down again and continue reading. Like I said earlier, gonna get through the rest of Modern Divination and then I'll check back in soon once we're finished with that. Hopefully the remainder of it has the witchy vibes that I'm looking for. Not gonna lie, I'm struggling through it a little bit. I'll talk more about my feelings once I'm done, but I have quite a few thoughts. Simultaneously, no thoughts, but also many, many thoughts. So we'll get into that soon. All right, so it's like a few hours later. I have some updates for you. First, I think that I have to live my truth and I'm gonna have to DNF this. <laughs> it's kind of putting me in a reading slump and I really don't wanna be in a reading slump. And I think there's a reason that I put this down like two months ago and just didn't continue. I just, I don't think it's for me and that's fine. But like, I don't wanna force myself through it. I don't know how to describe it exactly. And I'm not sure if anyone else who's read it felt has felt this way as well but i feel like i'm so lost every single time i'm reading this book i literally cannot tell what's happening sometimes i can't tell who's talking to who or who's even speaking like it's just a bit confusing sometimes and that's just really really throwing me off and i felt that way from the very beginning of the book i really feel like this needs to be edited down a little bit and it, it needs some like line editing. And I also just don't really know what's going on um, in terms of like the world and the magic system. I don't get how the magic works. And I feel like we're never really gonna get an actual explanation, any more of an explanation than we've already gotten. I like books that are like, no plot, just vibes. I'm definitely all for that. It's not even like that it's not my thing. There is a plot, but like it just, I, I need a little something more, you know? So I just, I think I'm gonna put it down. I think I, like I said, I have to be honest. <laughs> I have to live my truth. I can't force myself through something that I'm not enjoying. And unfortunately, I'm not enjoying this the way that I wanted to be. As sad as that makes me, um, it's fine. I have gotten better about DNFing things. So that's what we're gonna do with this one. But I did start reading Starling House. I'm currently on chapter eight right now. And I'm liking this so far. The plot seems interesting and I like the character actually now that I've started reading it I'm realizing I don't think this is YA um, this is adult fantasy which that's exciting um, I was expecting YA but it's not the main character is like 26 so love that as a 26 year old myself but yeah I did not realize that it's actually adult so yeah I'm gonna continue with this and hopefully I don't know if I'll finish it tonight but I'll make at least like a good amount of progress I'll probably get at least a little bit more than halfway through this is definitely not gonna be the best description of this book and it's not the most accurate by any means uh, because the plot of this is nothing like the plot of what I'm about to compare it to but something about this book makes me feel the way that I felt the first time I started watching Pretty Little Liars back when I was like 
12 or something. The first episode of that show when that aired, if you were around at that time, you know what like a cultural reset that was. But the like fall vibes that Pretty Little Liars had, especially like that pilot and that first season, this is kind of making me feel the way that made me feel. And I mean that as a full compliment. Again, it is nothing like it. It, the, the plot's not even remotely similar, but something about it just makes me feel like it's 2010, you just got home from school, you're sitting down on your couch and you're about to watch a new episode of an ABC Family or CW TV show airing in the fall. It's the new season premiere and you're just so excited to come home after school and sit down and enjoy it with like a hot cup of tea. That's what this makes me feel. I don't have many thoughts on the actual book, but the vibes, the vibes are there and they're exactly what I want. But yeah, definitely gonna continue with this, but I'll be back with more episodes updates once I have made some more progress. Okay, so I've made some progress in Starling House and I've just been sitting here in my cozy comfy chair with my little bunny light and my little Halloween bat. But I've been sitting in this chair for like a bit now and making decent progress through the book. And I've been super focused and a lot of that is in part because of an app I've been using recently called Endel, who is also the sponsor of today's video. Endel is an app that creates personalized soundscapes that can help you relax, focus, sleep, or be more productive. You can use it for whatever your needs may be, whether you are struggling to sleep consistently through the night or fall asleep, or if you just need some help focusing on a project. Endel is created with science and they have so many different soundscapes that you can use and you can also tailor them to your needs. The app is super cool because like I said, you can use it for whatever your personal needs may be. And recently I've really been using it to help me focus while I'm reading. One thing I really love to do while reading, as many of you know, is listen to music, but I know that some people find that really distracting and sometimes I can find it distracting too, depending on my mood. And I found that using the soundscapes on Endel has really helped me stay focused while I'm reading. You have a bunch of different scenarios that you can use. So you can use one for deep work, for creating, for self-care, meditating, and they specifically have one for reading as well. So that's what I've been using and you can set a timer for however long you would like so then you can just start it it starts working right away and then you can sit there and have like a 30 minute reading focus session. I find that really, really helpful as somebody who gets very easily distracted while I'm reading or while I'm doing any kind of task, honestly. And I always feel like this really just like keeps me on track. And I just love that they have a specific scenario for that. So as I said, you can use it for a number of different things, but um, it's been proven to be very useful for people who have ADHD or have sleep disorders to help them get fuller sleep or to help them focus a lot better. So if those are things that you struggle with, it might be really useful for you. So if you're interested in trying it out for yourself, the first 100 people to download Endel by clicking the link below will get a free week of audio experiences. So again, thank you to Endel for sponsoring this video. But now I'm gonna sit here and listen to my reading soundscape as I continue reading the rest of Starling House and hopefully finishing it tonight. Hello everyone, I have finished Starling House. It's the next day, I didn't feel like filming late at night, but yeah, finish the book. It was okay. I'm a little bit disappointed. I think I was expecting a little bit more from this. It wasn't bad by any means, don't get me wrong. I still enjoyed it, but overall, this was kind of marketed as like a gothic story, and I wouldn't really describe this as gothic. It was definitely a bit like sweeter than I was expecting it to be. I think I mentioned this earlier, but this reminded me a bit of like an old CW show, and specifically this gave me very strong, not in terms of plot, but just in terms of setting, very strong Vampire Diaries vibes. This literally felt like its own Mystic Falls. It's a small little town in the south with its own um, kind of mystical history. So it really just felt similar to that in that sense. I enjoyed parts of the romance as well. I just felt like it was a little too rushed for my personal taste. There just wasn't enough build up to it for me. And yeah, overall I was just like left kind of disappointed. I wanted to like it a lot more. Again, not a bad book. I ended up giving this like about three stars. I think it's enjoyable and I think some people might really like it but it doesn't really stand out to me as anything really exceptional or special or unlike other things I've read before. So yeah, I'm I'm just a little sad. <laughs> so I don't think I really explained what it's about, but Starling House is essentially about this house called Starling House that is in this town named Eden and our main character um, gets offered a job to work there basically as like a housekeeper and then she starts to learn a little bit more about like the stories about the house and the history of it and everything. So it's kind of about this like 
scary, mysterious house, as the title seems to suggest. The only thing that makes this adult is the character's ages, like they're a little bit older, they're in their mid-twenties, and the fact that there's like an on-page sex scene. Uh, it doesn't just like fade to black, but it's also not that descriptive. And like the use of language, I think that's why they would categorize this as adult, but apart from that, there really isn't much in here thematically that would make it not a YA book. Again, I just think it's like that age of the character's things, so their motivations are a little bit different. But if you like YA and you want to get into reading some more adult books, I definitely think this would be a good place for you to start. It's it's very very similar in terms of like writing style and stuff. So yeah I think it would be a good bridge between the two categories. Anyway that's it for Starling House. Unfortunately it did not give me the uh, Halloween vibes that I was looking for. It just like it wasn't scary in any way. Not that I expected it to be scary. It really wasn't that eerie or unsettling. It didn't really keep me up at night. The world building kind of just didn't make sense. Like the magic system didn't really exactly make sense and it was kind of just undescribed. So it didn't really make me feel much of anything or put me in the Halloween spirit that I'm trying to get into. Um, so I I need something else to read and earlier like I'd said for my TBR I'd planned to read Belladonna but I think that I'm actually gonna start another book. I was looking through Scribd which is the audiobook subscription that I use and I saw that they had Woman Eating on there and I've been wanting to read that book for a while now and all I know about it is that it's like literary fiction but it's about a woman who's a vampire and that sounds great to me. I feel like I need a vampire book. It's been so long since I've read anything about vampires or watched anything with vampires so I feel like that's what I need and I think that's what I'm gonna read next. Um, I'm gonna listen to the audiobook. It's also not super long, so I think I can make decent progress through that one. But yeah, that is gonna be my next read, and I think the last read for this video. <laughs> I have to pack because I'm going to my friend's house tomorrow, so maybe I'll continue the vlog until tomorrow. Maybe we'll do like a fun little Halloween themed activity or something, and I have some other things I need to do around the house, um, so I'm gonna listen to that while I do those things, and then I'll be back and we can talk some more about that book. I really just want to read something that I end up really loving in this video. Like, I really enjoyed Frankenstein and that was great but I want to read something five stars like something that blows me away completely so I really really just I need this and I'm hoping that this book is the one <laughs> because so far we've had a four star book which was great we've had a DNF unfortunately um and then a three star book so I'm hoping I'm hoping that this is the five star book the one that really gets my reading momentum back and the one that I end up falling in love with because I would love I would love for that to be the case but maybe I'm putting too much pressure on the book who knows Hopefully it lives up to the expectations. We'll never know unless I get started. <laughs> Hello everyone, good morning. It's the next day. I am getting ready or like about to leave very soon actually to go to my friend's house. So I have to like finish up packing and I have to leave pretty soon. So I gotta do this really quickly. First and foremost, I made some progress on woman eating. I'm loving this book. This is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> so far, this book is the definition of girl dinner. Girl feast, if you will. Uh, it's phenomenal. <laughs> I said I wanted something with vampires and this is exactly what I meant. I think anyone who's kind of a fan of um, My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshfeg, which I didn't love per se, but I think if you like that genre of lit fic specifically about like depressed women in their 20s, you'll probably really love this. I'm not even finished yet. I still have like an hour and a half left of the audiobook, but I'm, I'm so, so, invested and I know it's gonna be a favorite. So yeah, I plan to listen to the rest of that today on my drive up. So I'll definitely be finishing that and I'll give you all my final thoughts once I'm done. But yeah, so excited. I'm glad I'm really, really loving this. It's exactly what I wanted it to be. Second update, um, like I said, I'm going to my friend's house, but last night was the Eras Tour movie premiere in Los Angeles and Taylor Swift decided to surprise drop that she's actually releasing the Eras Tour movie one day early, which means today, October 12th. So my friends and I are gonna go tonight and I'm so so excited. I am literally wearing my vintage 1989 tour shirt. This one is actually the one that I got for my sister when I went to the tour but I cannot find my original Polaroid shirt so I stole this from her closet. And my friendship bracelets that people gave me at the concert. If you gave me one of these thank you so much. I'm not trading it away. Um, I'm keeping these. I just didn't make any so I just wanted to wear them you know to stay on theme. But yeah I'm so excited. It's gonna be really fun. I'll take you along with me tonight too and then we'll probably end the vlog at the end of the day today. I think it'll be a good place to wrap up. I'm so excited to continue reading the book. I know I'm absolutely going to be obsessed with it and I'm excited to see my friends and go to the movie and yeah it's just going to be a really really great day. So I have to pack up the rest of my suitcase really quick and head out the door very soon and I will see you all later once I finish the book and give you all my final updates.
Hello everyone. So I am with my best friend Katie at yeah. Katie's house. Finally made it here. As you saw, we went to lunch and it was really fun, really good food. And now we're gonna head to the um, Taylor Swift movie, Eras Tour movie, so excited. But before we get into that, I need to tell you about my final thoughts on woman eating. AKA um, girl dinner. AKA Alternate girl title. AKA girl dinner. As I said earlier, girl feast. That book was so good. I finished it on the drive over here. Oh my god. I was telling Katie in the car that she has to read it because I'm obsessed. This book is, first of all, content warnings for like eating disorders, sexual harassment, and uh, just like trauma, racism, like plenty of that in it. The girl experience. The girl experience, honestly. <laughs> but definitely be sure to check the content warnings if you decide to read it. It's kind of heavy at times, but oh my god, it's so phenomenal. I am obsessed with this book. Anybody who has like mommy issues, was into vampires, and had an eating disorder or might still have one, <laughs> you have to read this book. It's perfect. It's just, it's so good. It's so, so good. Five out of five stars. This is exactly what I was looking for, exactly the way that I wanted to, like the note I wanted to end this video on in terms of the books that I've read. It's easily my favorite one I've read in this video and I think one of my favorite books I've read this year. 100% for fans of Ripe or My Year of Rest and Relaxation or anybody who likes lit fic but likes a little bit more fantasy in their lit fic. Fantasy as metaphor, vampirism as metaphor so good so so good truly this is my girl dinner this is my roman empire obsessed with that book anyway now we're gonna head over to the movie theater we're ending this fall halloween-ish kind of themed reading vlog going to the era's tour movie which is not really on theme but you but know, it is it also. is so it isn't it is in some ways she's going like with girlfriends and that which and I'm, I'm sorry I hate when people use the word girlfriends I actually like really despise it <laughs> I meant that to be more separated as a word mm -hmm. um she's going with her girlfriends and that feels fall like fall is not fall is for, for the girls <laughs> fall is for the girls <laughs> and the gays and the theys yeah it's for us and that's it so but yeah did lots of fun fall things in this video <laughs> Went to a pumpkin patch, read my eerie Halloween themed books, um, and of course, now a concert film. Yes. Just concert film. Concert film. That's what it's called, is it not? Yeah, I know, that just is such a like you thing to like <laughs> Sorry. call it a concert film. That's what it is, it's a concert film. It's a concert film. It's a concert film. Well, <laughs> now the girlies are going to their concert film to watch Mother perform, okay? And that um, feels very like witchy yeah. in its own. Well, we're gonna own way. we're gonna watch the Willow performance, and everyone already thinks she's like satanic for that and like a witch for that. So that's the fall activity. <laughs> but this will be Katie's first Taylor Swift concert experience in any mm -hmm. capacity before we go to the Eras tour together mm -hmm. next November. Yes. <laughs> so it's a good practice activity. I have to teach her the chance and everything. Like I like some of her music. I'm not a huge stan the way that mm -hmm. so many people are but <laughs> i like some stuff a lot especially mm -hmm. the newer albums i'm gonna indoctrinate her yes. so it'll it'll all work out all right that's it <laughs> 